Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we'll be taking a quick look at the armors that were used in the movie Aragon from 2006. Let's look at the main character first. He has scale armor. The scales themselves are quite oddly shaped. I haven't seen any historical scales like this, but presumably they're simply made like this in order to look more like dragon scales because he's a dragon rider. The other... Let's talk about mistakes first though. Well, there's two mistakes in this armor. The first one is the scales don't actually overlap. This creates an issue and means that there's a lot of space between these individual scales, leaving the underlying material, leather in the case of the chest, cloth in the case of the arms, exposed to stabs. The other mistake is that it's not, it's very snug, it's, it fits the body very well, but you don't want armor to be this tight because it suggests to me that there is no underlying padding. That means that if you get hit with a sword in the chest, the kinetic energy will transfer to the chest very directly, causing bruising, possibly um, you know, minor fractures on ribs or something like that. But you know, if you had padding, that wouldn't be so much of an issue. So, you know, quite a easily fixable mistake, but one that they made nonetheless. Next, let's look at the armor of the main female character, Arya. At first, I thought it was a metal armor, primarily because of the lighting, but it appears to be just costume leather. After that, I thought, you know, it has these really weird looking rivets, I thought they were rivets, you know, it might be a brigandine of some sort, you know, a coat of plates. But, you know, on a closer look, it doesn't look like that. They are very, very asymmetrical. And that's not a good way to attach the you know the underlying steel plates to a coat of plates. You don't want it like that. And you know the other things that just just look really weird. I don't think they're actually rivets. I think it's just you know costume leather with these weird metal things just strapped on to make it look fancier. And the other thing is that you know it's very snug on the body and presumably also doesn't have any sort of padding which is just generally a very big mistake. You want to layer your armor as much as possible. The more layers of armor you have, the less likely they are to be penetrated. And, you know, you know, people will say, oh, but lots of layers of armor are heavy. Yeah, they are heavy, but if you're athletic enough, it doesn't matter. I've seen people, you know, wearing full plate armor doing backflips and cartwheels. It doesn't matter. So, a pretty big mistake in the princess's armor. Now, this shot, we see two things of interest. The first is the woman to the left, who has this really weird looking, I want to say bronze, because it looks bronze armor, but it's, it's likely isn't, probably just painted like that, but it has a boob plate, absolutely wonderful. You don't want a bell, you obviously don't want a bell shaped cuirass, which will deflect blows away from your body, you want something that will slide blows directly to the center of your chest. And the trio of guards to the right seem to be wearing, you know, workable helmets and mail, not bad, not fully bad, uh, workable. Now let's look at the bad guys then, the quote unquote bad guys. The Empire, there's two types of Imperial Armor, there's the armor that you see right now, which is essentially the, uh, apparently the elite Imperial Armor, appears to be a decent-ish helmet and some armor that is either something like along the lines of a muscle cuirass, which would be pretty good, or leather armor with no underlying padding that fits the body very snugly. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be generous, I'm gonna say something like a muscle cuirass. <laughs> because leather armor, you know, that fits the body very snugly. It's bad on so many levels. Next we have the armor of the Empire used by the common so foot soldiers, and this is what I think the best armor in the movie. The chest armor appears to be lamellar, you know, similar to, I would say, you know, lamellar generally think like Japanese armor or like a Lorica Segmentata. This appears to be lamellar armor. And the helmet is decent. They also appear to be wearing either very, very thick clothing or padded armor underneath, which is decent. So, yeah, basically, the mooks have the best armor. Not what you expect. Anyways, yeah, that was a quick look at the armor, there's not a ton to say, seeing as the most notable piece of armor wasn't a fucking dragon. 